The DNR's Ortonville Area Fisheries manages 45 walleye rearing ponds in western Minnesota. The ponds are stocked with fry in the spring, then netted in the fall and transported to area lakes and streams to sustain a healthy walleye population and increased fishing opportunities. But nets can't capture all the young walleyes and those that escape grow large quickly, which is good news for kids living near ponds where big fish are stocked just for them. Today we're coming out, water temperature is about 55 degrees, it's an optimal time to be out there harvesting fish. Well, this pond, um, we've been using it for about four years. We came in yesterday and set a bunch of trap nets. The heaviest net I've ever lifted with walleyes has been 211 pounds, I can still remember it. And I've lifted too many zeros that I, it's hard to remember all the zeros. But we're generally looking for that five to 10 to the pound, 10 to the 10 pounds per net is productive. We like to see fingerling production, meaning fish that are produced this year, stocked as fry, caught in the fall, smaller stuff. They go to our lake stocking program. We have ponds, several ponds that carry over, meaning they don't winter kill and the fish survive year after year. And we've had ponds that, we've had fish over nine pounds coming out of our rearing ponds. They just last so long in there. So we're looking for ways to use those fish when we catch them. And what better way we thought than to find some kids fishing ponds. As soon as we put them in there, they're the size that they're keeper size. And uh, we're looking for small basins in close proximities to towns that are gonna be able to get used by what we hope is, is a lot of kids out there fishing. We try to put them in there in the spring and in the fall. So they're there throughout the open water season and then again in the, uh, uh, with the ice fishing. We stock them quite heavily, way, way heavier than we would a managed lake. So when we stock them, we do a lot of promoting of that stocking. Uh, get a hold of the local newspapers, let them know, hey, we put this amount of fish in there, this is the size, and really do uh, a lot of PR work trying to encourage kids to get out there and go fishing. Sylvan Lake in Canby is one of the ponds that DNR stocks with large walleyes to lure young people into the sport of fishing. It's really convenient because you can just come down here if you live in Canby and just fish. It's just fun to catch them, you know, just have a great time, don't get bothered, just nice, peaceful out here. When it's a small, about two acre basin, little reservoir right in the downtown. There's a fishing pier on it. Um, pretty easy access all the way around that basin to provide fishing. The nice thing with Sylvan is that it does get some runoff from one of our management lakes. So there'll be some perch in there sometimes, there'll be some bluegills in there. But what happens is there's not the numbers that can uh, provide a steady fishery, um, not for a whole season. So that's why we come in there with the numbers, trying to pro provide uh, a more active fishery per se. We're just losing a lot of the, the youth um, from fishing. This is an instant gratification generation where they're used to, whether it's on the uh, Xbox catching fish and it happens quickly. So you got to capture them um, pretty aggressively. So we're trying to maximize that bite. Last fall, area fisheries staff Chris Domeyer and BJ Bauer headed out at night to capture large walleyes in a pond near Ortonville. To move smaller fish, they would set nets one day, then bring them up the next day. But for large fish, the stun and capture method works best. Electric fishing can be a useful tool where you're going out there at the end. Uh, you're actively or aggressively trying to catch the fish. Electric fishing, we're going out into these shallow basins. Um, sometimes when they're so shallow, they don't net very well either, or they're full of vegetation and the fish aren't moving along shore. So then we'll actively go out there and, and try to catch them with the electric fishing boat. The one day on one of our ponds, we had um, nine fish that we brought back to the truck and the nine fish weighed 72 pounds. So uh, some monstrous walleyes from, from ponds. And we put into a, a little kid's pond and talking with the kids the next year, this kid went on and on talking about the fight of his life and it actually broke his line right before he got to see it. But that fight that he had, that, that time that he got to fight that fish was so memorable to that kid. And uh, so that, you know, it's exciting when you're doing stuff and seeing it pay off with kids down the road, where they're, whether they're actually catching the fish or experiencing the near miss, uh, it's all exciting to them. 
you get them out there and it's a it's a boring day and I can speak from experience with my own kids. If you're not out there when they're little and seeing a bite, um, it's hard to get them back out the next time. You know, they're looking for some action. And uh, so that's what we're trying to provide. And we do a kid's day, meaning we go up to the school and, and promote fisheries in the school that day. It's a fifth grade group and every year I ask them, how many of you guys have fished out on that kid's fishing pond? And inevitably, it's generally 80 to 90% of these kids have been out there. And when I ask them to raise their hands with what they've caught, uh, most of them raise their hands. But my favorite uh, fishing story, that was when we were doing ice fishing events. And this little girl was out fishing and she caught a, about 11 inch perch. And uh, she said, you know, I caught 11 inch perch. And, and the guy fishing, so now tell him how many fish have you caught in your life? She said, I caught an 11 inch perch. It was her first fish she'd ever gotten. It was a beautiful perch. And she was just thrilled to death to have had caught that fish. And when you get them early like that, you get that enthusiasm going, they're more apt to keep going with it. It doesn't do us any good if we have kids going out there fishing one time and never again. If we get them going out there into these put and take situations and they can get a fish or two and we encourage people to bring them home and eat them. And they get that, they bring them home and they're able to eat them with their family that they've caught, that they provided. Um, we're trying to create that fisherman or gal for the next generation.